Yeah, that's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a what I am needing is a stopping of the bleeding edition of the Always Irish Show. It's going to be a long week, folks. It's only Tuesday, and it feels like this week's been a month. Thanks for joining me on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. You would be surprised how much that helps me in the search algorithm. Notifications on that way. You'll be alerted every time there's something we got to discuss. Twitter, search bar, always Irish, or at always Irish Inc. Emails, always Irish Inc. at gmail.com. Audio only, anywhere he wants me, you can get me. 312 900 Call in line. Popping. Popular line on. 312900 always Irish. Here we are, folks. Thanks for being back for more. I'm glad to see that. Thank you for being here. There's a lot of the fan base that has seen enough and they're done, I guess, or so they say. That is totally up to you. It's totally up to you. If you're a Notre Dame fan and you've seen enough and you're just done for now, fine. That's your prerogative. But I got a couple things I got to add to that. Number one is, you can do what you want to do. Fan however you want to fan. That's up to you. That's not for me to tell you. But if you're already bailing on the Freeman era overall, and you've seen enough, not that you have complaints about Reese or this or that. We all do. But if you're bailing on the entire Freeman era already and you're just, I'm out of here, I'm not watching this, fine. But you're not welcome back in my circle if and when Marcus gets this all figured out and in a couple years Notre Dame's really good again. So if you're those people tweeting it and messaging it to me and putting it in the comments or whatever, totally fine. But if you're going away now when it's hard, You're not welcome back in my circle when things are good again. And I can have great analytic numbers on my channel for a good reason. Not like this weekend where the numbers were good because everybody was mad and wanted to tune in to see me mad. I want it good on the other side where we're really good and everybody's excited and invested. So if you're out, fine, but you're not welcome back in my circle. All right. I'm a firm believer in. If you're a diehard of a team and you ride it through some bad times and misery, when when you do finally win, it's going to mean more to you than somebody who were bad a few years, I'm just going to not pay attention. And then when we're good, I'll get invested again. If you make it out on the other side and you win something, it's going to mean a lot more to the people that remember all that misery. Remember all of that frustration. All of it. But through it all, you still love Notre Dame. You're going to complain, but you still want them to win, and you're going to watch. You're just going to be miserable and be mad. So, fine. If you've seen it up and you're done, I'm fine with that. But you're not welcome back in my circle when times are good. This is an inverse operation in me. I'm not telling you how to do it. But for me, it's all equally proportioned. As happy as I am if we ever beat somebody great is as sad as I am when something bad happens. They're equal. They're equal. It has to be that way for you to be a true fan. You don't just get to enjoy the fun stuff and then drop off the face of the earth for the hard stuff. I mean, you can, but other fans shouldn't respect you. So do what you need to do. But you're not allowed to bail on Freeman and then come back in my stuff in a couple years when it looks better. No. All right. Let's get into this Cal situation. Welcome to Pride Week. No, not the one your local city has with the parade and all the fixings. That ain't the kind of pride I'm talking about. Welcome to Pride Week, Notre Dame football. That's all 
this Notre Dame California football game comes down to from the Notre Dame end. Pride. Your season's goals are ruined. Everything's going against you. The most important player on your team and short term and developmentally for the entire program in the near future is hurt now for the year. Nobody believes in you. I, you're at home playing for pride. That's all that's left. That's it, you guys. That's all that's left right now. The head coach you love's taking major heat. Nobody, everybody's against you. It's all working against you. Where's your pride? After last week, what happened to Marshall? Where's your pride, Notre Dame? That's it. It's a very, very telling week for the staff and the players. Last week was in a lot of ways, but a lot of that kicked in after the result. This is a big week. It's a big week. Um, it's just telling for these players and staff, how are you going to react one week to the next after this catastrophe and try and right the ship or at least bail some of the water out of it while it's going down? Pride is all Notre Dame has at the moment. Gut check time. Leadership time. Time for a playmaker to decide Notre Dame is better than this. I am taking over this game and I'm going to make us win this game. It has to be that time. We need it. We need it. I don't care how it looks. You just have to find a way to win. There is no such thing as working on things, style points, letting the second string play. No, you do not have that luxury. This, you don't, you just don't. I can't believe I'm saying all this, but you don't. So uh, you are in crisis, stop the bleeding mode is what you're in. I don't care how it looks. You, we're, not in, we're not good enough to complain about what a win looks like right now. That's where we're at. You just have to find a way to get this win. Crawl, crawl scrape, dig, whatever you need to do. This is about leadership and pride this week. That's what it is. It's about leadership and pride. You are at home again. And you know, a part of me wonders if, follow me here. A part of me is wondering if this, this dynamic we're in right now and the nightmare we're in, I wonder if it would be easier on the team if this next game was away. I've been thinking about that. Like, not a way against an Ohio State-type team, but like in a way against Cal. Not a crazy environment, but not at home. Not at home either, where the vibes are going to be weird. The vibes are going to be weird. It is. It, 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 it crossed my mind. It might be easier for them to play Cal at their place to a half-empty stadium anyways and then figure it out there than the awkwardness that it's going to feel in South Bend this, this weekend. All your season's goals are ruined in week two. You have no wins. The vibe's going to be bad. The vibe's going to be bad. All the white claws and sunshine in the world don't undo the facts. All right? At your little tailgate. So, I, 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 Cal's a must win. And, 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 and the fact the fact that I have to sit here on a Tuesday morning all stressed out talking about Cal's a must win for the Notre Dame program. How in the hell did we get here? I can't believe it's come to this. But here we are. Don't forget, everybody, going to the game. Wear your green. Wear your green, everybody, to honor Marshall's win at your place last week. Like, when I say everything's working against Notre Dame, when I say everything, I mean freaking everything. You do this cool reveal green jerseys back in the summer. This is going to be the week. And it turns out it's going to be a beautiful way to make everybody extra remember those green jerseys Marshall had when they beat you. Uh, everything's working against us, folks. Everything's working against us. But make sure you wear your green to be seen. Okay. Oh my God. I just can't believe 
the flaming turd that got left by the flying herd. Okay. I can't believe it. I, I can't believe this is where we are. This is all like a dream simulation to me. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think it's real, folks. You got to write the ship. Um, but honestly, I, I'm going to be in South Bend Saturday. I am honestly expecting it to kind of feel like tailgating before grandma's funeral. That's kind of the vibe I'm expecting. I expect to feel like I'm tailgating at my grandma's funeral. That's probably the vibe, okay? Fans, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But if you're in that stadium, you got to try and be loud and support our guys. Like, I know morale is low, but all you can do is cheer them on and hope for the best. I mean, if you are home, I know it's, it's just going to be an awkward vibe in that building. I know what it's like. Like, I've been around the block, you guys. I'm probably 70, 80, 90 home games in. Like, I know every vibe there is. From Bush Push to 2012 Stanford, everything on the line undefeated, to you're done in September, to you're done in November, and it's home, it's it's the senior day, and it's miserable and cold. No one wants to be there. Like, there's predictable vibes for Notre Dame home games. And this one, I'm predicting tailgating at grandma's funeral is the vibe all day. So Try and be loud if you're in there. You got to help our guys. That's all any of us can do. Notre Dame's a 10 and a half point favorite. Don't get excited. They were a 20 and a half point favorite last week. More interesting to me is the 43 and a half over under. That might be an under factory to me. If you're looking to make a little dough, look at that under. 43.5. Kidding me? Could take it. 43, we might not have that many points in seven games combined. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's better than crying, folks. Um, so if you're looking at that spread and you're thinking 10 and a half favorite at home, Notre Dame's going to roll, uh, you must be an idiot because look at the tape from last week. Not so fast, my friend. Okay, here's some news, folks. If you haven't looked into Cal at all, the best part of Cal's team and program is their defense. Good luck. I'm, I'm just telling you, you want more good news? The best part of Cal's team is their defense. It ain't getting any easier, especially with the new quarterback. With the skim similar skill set, but slower, shorter, not as good of an arm. I All right. All right. Let's see how it goes. I mean, I want Pine to succeed. I do. We need him to succeed. I want him to. I'm hoping he does. I'm rooting for it. I'm pulling for him. Good kid done all the right things. This is a lot to lay on him. When we're, philosophically speaking, laying in the streets, bleeding out. Now it's Pine. It's He's got to stop the bleeding. So, I don't know if he could do it at all or if he could do it this week, if he could do it against some of the other teams we play that are better than Cal. I don't know. I'm rooting for him. I just have severe hesitations. And it isn't all, all just necessarily because of him. But then when you add in the offensive line issues, makes it worse. The wide receiver issues makes it worse. It's, it's just a, a stew of bad ingredients currently. Um. 2021 Cal D allowed 22 points a game. They've given up 13 and 14 in the two games so far. Yes, lower level teams, UC Davis, and then uh, I believe UNLV that Notre Dame plays later. So they've given up 13 and 14 to those two teams. They are 2-0. and Here's the deal, though. Notre Dame's blood is in the water now. That's the other thing I've realized after the Marshall thing is, and I'm starting to process it more. The blood's in the water now and Cal knows it. And so does every other team on Notre Dame's schedule. Notre Dame was already extremely limited on offense with Buckner. Now without him, they're going to be even more limited on offense. 
And now you have the tape showing all the things that haven't worked for Notre Dame's offense in two weeks. Notre Dame's very easy to prepare for right now. They're extremely easy to prep for. And there's blood in the water, folks. Blood in the water. And if momentum matters to you at all, and to me it does in college football, more than in a lot of sports, but it does matter to me a lot in college football. They're coming in 2-0, and feeling really good, and just saw another what's perceived to be team that isn't as good as Notre Dame go in there and whip Notre Dame. It was not a fluky win at all. They dominated Notre Dame. That that was not South Florida. You're making 98-yard drives, turn it over on the one, but you could see that you were doing things. That wasn't even this. You got dominated here. So that tape is out. Notre Dame's easy to prep for. That's a problem. All right? Justin Wilcox is a good head coach. Sermon's the defensive coordinator. They're going to run a 2-4-5 base. Here's what they like to do, too. I see this, and I am not an X's and O's guy at all. Every preview I've seen of this ball game and of Cal's defense says this. They run that 2-4-5 base, and what they love to do more than anything else is have linebackers on each side waiting for a moment to blitz and come off the edge, either in a passing situation or to come up and stop a run. That every single preview I've set, I've seen has had that as a key feature of the Cal defense. If I know that ahead of time, there's no way Notre Dame doesn't see it and know it. And I cannot have free blitzers coming to kill our quarterback again another week. Diggs, Diggs, looking at you, man. Totally didn't, totally missed your guy and got the quarterback killed. Can't have it. But I know we struggle in that area. And I know they're good in that area. Keep an eye on it. I am not open to that even happening one time. Every single preview said that's what Notre Dame needs to look for out of this defense. I am not even open to seeing it happen once. I am a nobody in my basement. And I already know I have to account for those guys off the edge now. If Notre Dame does it, I, I'm, I can't handle that. I can't handle that. All right? They have good playmakers on defense, folks. And again, this is yet another week, just like Marshall week, where the narrative should be about how do we see Notre Dame working on stuff, getting themselves better, getting younger guys reps, all of that. No. No. You are in a position where you cannot do that You're laying in the street, bleeding out. Every single game is deadly serious here for your reputation. Now, their offense, that's where you would hope Notre Dame can make some hay here. Jack Plummer, the old Purdue quarterback that we played, all right, that's who they got. Accurate, but nothing special. The offensive line has questions. Then again, so do I for our defensive line. Like, that's the issue, folks. You see a, a, a team perceived to be a lower level than Notre Dame like Cal, and then you say even their reporters beat guys are saying offensive line's a little iffy, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then you say, well, then Notre Dame should be able to eat, dominate up front, you know, front seven, navigate the line of scrimmage, suffocate them, win the game. Yeah, that was what I thought was going to happen against Marshall, too. Like, that's the issue analyzing all this. You have to assume nothing right now. You have to assume no good production, no game-saving plays. Like, I have to assume that because it's what we have. I can't assume things that I haven't seen. This isn't the off-season anymore. We're two weeks in. It's not hypotheticals. I'm, I got to go up what I've seen us be able to do and not do. So, You would hope Notre Dame's defensive front could take advantage of some of the vulnerabilities on this Cal line. Uh, They should have been able to do it last week and didn't. So I don't trust that. So both of those fronts have question marks. Me with the defensive line, them with the offensive line. They seem to have spurts where they could flow on offense, go right down the field with some rhythm and score. 
other series where they can't get anything to go and it's disjointed and, and they're punting. Sound familiar? Sounds real familiar. I expect really low scoring. I expect ugly. Who's going to will Notre Dame to victory? Who? The defense has an advantageous matchup this week. I need havoc. I have to have it. I got to have major havoc, especially because we know the offense is limited and now it's even more limited because you're going with a less mobile quarterback when running the quarterback was your best offensive thing you did. Okay? Like, times are not great, folks. I, I, I just... So, I need the defense then, if there's any way, take advantage. Turnovers. You can't have no turnovers. Like, you need havoc plays. Especially If your offense is scoring 50 points like Ohio State, I'm not stressing out over the low turnover number. By the way, Ohio State, I believe, is one of the two other teams that doesn't have any turnovers. It's interesting. Notre Dame, Ohio State, and Alabama. Very interesting that, that that's how that shakes out. So, but when your offense is really bad and you have no turnovers, you're in a bad spot. So I need that defense to take advantage. On offense, this is where it gets much more interesting for me on Notre Dame when we have the ball. Much more interesting to me in a depressing and curious way. What looks different under Drew Pine this week? What looks different? It seems very obvious to me. There's no way Reese can look at what the last two games were and then have the idea that he's going to try and run a similar structured offense this week. How can anybody do that? How can you know what you've been trying to do two weeks in a row is not working and then go and try and do the exact same thing a third time? You can't. You can't. Now, there's a little leeway on this. Some people are going to say, John, you know how football is. Sometimes, you know, there's a game and you need to try and run the ball and you feel like you need to establish that. So you keep going to it like, you can't just bail on something right away because it's not working. Like, I get that, but only up to a point. And that point is the point where you think you're going to lose to Marshall at home. That would be the point where a logical person would say, we are about to lose to Marshall. As much as I want to establish us as a power run team, and make that our identity, it's not happening, and we're going to lose to Marshall. So I need to try some other stuff to not lose to Marshall. And then work on being a run-first team later. Like, there has to be a point where you say, we're going to lose this game if I keep doing what I wanted to do just because it was the plan. So you have to pivot or you lose. You have to pivot or you lose. All right. I are you going to try and run the ball for zero yards 80 times into a wall? Or are you going to try and move the pocket, which is what the offense should have looked like under Buckner? That's the thing, folks. This Reese thing is bugging me the more I think about it. In the summer, we said, when you're looking at a Buckner Notre Dame offense, what do you want it to look like? We thought we were going to have to rely on the running game, and that's not happening. So there's issue one. You do not have a decent running game. The offensive line can't block it. And nobody seems to know what the rotation is at running back, who the lead guy is. Nobody seems to know any of that. But I was saying in the summer, if you're running a Buckner offense, unlike throwing him in there with Cone last year, where the offense was built for Cone's skill set, and then Buckner's didn't really overlap it. All summer, I was saying, I want to see Reese build out an offense that caters to Buckner's comforts and strengths the most. For me, that means RPO, moving the pocket, rolling Buckner out, play action, uh, extending plays to the side where he can run it or throw it, moving the pocket right, then moving it left. 
That's where Tyler Buckner's best. That is where he's most comfortable working, is on the move. Not as much thinking, more reacting to what you see. He is a young player. That all made perfect sense to me as what the plan should have been. Rely on that good run game. You know there's issues at wide receiver, but get Buckner on the move to open everything up. That's not it. That's not it at all. That is not the plan Reese came up with for this year. They planned on being a power run first heavy team, and then they figured off that they would figure out the other stuff. Not want Buckner to run around a ton and get hurt. Yeah, how'd that go? How long did that last? Figure out the wide receiver stuff later, but live off that power run game, living in the pocket. Has not worked. So you have to explain to me why Buckner, prior to the injury, had 47 pass attempts in the pocket and only three out of it moving on a planned play. To me, that is planning negligence. That is planning negligence. When you know his strength is doing it on the move, and we're skewed that much that it's been 47 dropbacks in the pocket, only three moving, which is his strength, what he's best at, what he's good at, what he's comfortable at. They went the other way, and they found out now it's dead wrong. Dead wrong. But the idea that you would cater to your young quarterback by structuring all the offense around his strengths and comforts made all the logical sense to me in the world. And you could still run the ball heavy while doing that. They, di- they're not, they didn't come into this doing that. They tried to make him a drop back passer and he's not good at it. It makes no sense. It's super alarming. It is not using the strengths of your quarterback. I don't get it. I don't get it. So are you going to make an obvious effort This week, to do something different, move the pocket. Pine's under six feet. You need to move the pocket anyways for him to get the ball over the line sometimes. And I'm not even being mean or insulting. I mean, physically, literally. Are you going to make an effort to get the ball to your playmakers? Like, when you're struggling this much on offense, you need to scheme more ways. To get Tyree, Mayer, and Styles the ball anywhere they can. Anywhere they can. It's criminal, the under usage of Chris Tyree the first two games. Criminal. Criminal how underused he's been. Run game and p- short pass game, too. You know, Braden Lindsay's had 10 balls thrown to him. They're not all his fault, but only two of the 10 have been completed to Braden Lindsay. He has a very mostly cold, you know, hot and cold history of being available and his play when he's in there. Caught two balls out of the 10 thrown to him. Not that reliable because of injury, whatever. And you're telling me you would rather run a 50-50 jump ball down the middle of the field to under six foot tall Lindsay instead of Merriweather who's six four pushing six five. That's what you're telling me. You have a three to four man wide receiver rotation killing you, not getting production out of it. And this freshman who's six four, six five, can't run down the field and jump and make a play. I you're overthinking it, Notre Dame's coaches. You really are. You're over. Sometimes these coaches, they just get in their own head. They're overthinking this. It doesn't have to be that hard. And it's like, well, we only want guys out there if they can run the full playbook and they're good blockers and they're not missing anything. Then you need all that package before you can see time. You don't have that luxury. Looking at the wide receiver room through that lens is a luxury. And it's one you don't have because you don't have the bodies and you don't have the production. So you don't get the luxury to be picky about 
the guys being well-rounded and great at everything to see the field. You don't have that. You're desperate for plays to be made. Let the 6'5 guy run fast and jump. I'll take those odds over Lindsey, who's never proven to be good at that ever. I don't get it. You cannot give me one good reason Merriweather can't get some balls thrown to him to see if he could do something. You're not in the position to be all high and mighty about these freshmen aren't ready. You're not. You're not. I, this stuff's really getting to me. So where's the pivot, Tommy? You're the genius. You're the NFL mind. You're the one who sees a game at a, at a level I could never understand as a regular lay person. Where's your pivot? What are you going to do this week? I, I can't even imagine what this show's going to be like if they run an offense out there that looks like the one that isn't working. I'm going to lose it. I'm absolutely going to lose it. So this week, folks, stop the bleeding any way you can. Any way at all. You just got to stop yourself from bleeding out and dying in the road. And if you end up dropping to 0-3 to oh and three against Cal with North Carolina and BYU right behind it, it can't happen. So as depressing as it is, this is the ultimate must win for Notre Dame for all the worst reasons in the world, folks. So it's Pride Week. You got to get this thing above, back above water uh, or at least slow down the pace at which the Titanic's taking the water on. So this is a telling week for the staff and players. Telling. How are they going to react to this? Does Notre Dame have the resolve to say enough's enough? We're winning this game because it has to get done. It's going to be interesting to see. I just hope we figure it out. Have a good one, folks.